This video demonstrates the Veritox assay for histamine. To review sample preparation, please review the kit insert. This video serves only as a companion to the written material provided with the test kit. Please read and follow the instructions in their entirety. Remember, it is important to use good laboratory practices. This includes wearing proper PPE and ensuring all lab equipment is working properly and is calibrated in accordance with your laboratory's policies. Each Veritox for Histamine kit contains 48 antibody-coated microwells, 48 red-marked mixing wells, 6 yellow-labeled bottles of histamine controls. Controls are for 0, 2.5, 5, 10, 20, and 50 parts per million. One blue label of histamine HRP conjugate solution. One foil pouch of sample extract diluent buffer concentrate of 10 millimolar PBS dry powder. One bottle of 40 milliliter wash buffer concentrate of 10 millimolar PBS tween. One green label bottle of K-Blue substrate solution. One red label bottle of red stop solution. Materials that are recommended but not provided are Veritox for histamine extraction kit, disposable bottles with 125 milliliter capacity, filter syringes for histamine, Wattman number no. one filter paper, centrifuge or equivalent, sample collection tubes, 100 milliliter graduated cylinder, blender, test tube rack, 15 mil graduated tubes, a scale capable of weighing 10 to 50 grams, microwell strip reader with 650 nanometer filter, a 12 channel pipetter, 100 microliter pipetter, tips for 12 channel and 100 microliter pipetters, paper towels or equivalent absorbent material, microwell holder, timer, waterproof marker, wash bottle, one liter bottle with lid, two reagent boats for 12 channel pipetter, distilled or deionized water. A few reminders before getting started. Store the test kit at a refrigerated temperature when not in use and allow reagents to reach room temperature before testing. Do not use kit components beyond the expiration date. Also remember to never use glassware when testing for histamine. Histamine will adhere to glass and affect test results. Before starting your testing, prepare reagents. To make the sample extract diluent buffer, add the foil pouch of extract buffer to one liter of distilled or deionized water. Swirl to mix. Store remaining buffer covered at room temperature. To prepare the wash buffer, mix 40 milliliters of wash buffer concentrate into 960 milliliters of distilled or deionized water. Swirl to mix, but do not shake. Store the remaining wash buffer at room temperature. Next step is to prepare and extract your samples. To prepare your samples, refer to the kit insert for commodity-specific instructions. Once the samples have been prepared, they will need to be extracted. As a reminder, do not use glassware during extraction for histamine samples. For liquid and wet samples, add 10 grams of the homogeneous mixture to a clean disposable extraction bottle containing 90 milliliters of distilled or deionized water. Tightly cap and vigorously shake the bottle for 15 to 20 seconds in order to suspend the fish tissue in the water. Wait approximately five minutes, then shake the bottle for 15 to 20 seconds in order to resuspend the fish tissue. Wait an additional five minutes and again shake the bottle for 15 to 20 seconds in order to resuspend the fish tissue. Allow the tissue to settle to the bottom of the bottle for about 30 seconds. If necessary, filter the contents through folded filter paper or a histamine filter syringe into a clean container. The sample is now ready for extract dilution. As an alternative, centrifuge the sample and use the clear supernatant as the sample for extract dilution. For dry samples such as fish meal, please refer to the kit insert for extraction instructions. Please note that samples should be tested within four hours of extraction. Moving to the third step, samples must be diluted. 
Add 10 milliliters of sample extract diluent buffer to a clean test tube or bottle. Using a clean pipette tip, add 100 microliters of the extract to the sample extract diluent buffer. Gently swirl to mix. Repeat for all samples. The sample is now ready to test. Remove one red marked mixing well for each sample to be tested, plus five red marked wells for controls and place in the well holder. Remove an equal number of antibody coated wells. As a note, do not run more than 24 wells per assay run. Return antibody wells that will not be used immediately to the foil pack with desiccant. Reseal the foil pack to protect the antibody. Mark one end of the strip with a one and place strip in the well holder with the marked end on the left. Do not mark on the inside or the bottom of the wells. Mix each reagent by swirling the reagent bottle prior to use. Add 100 microliters of conjugate from the blue labeled bottle to each red marked mixing well. Make sure to use proper pipetting techniques. The controls are supplied ready to use. Do not dilute. Use a new pipette tip for each. Transfer 100 microliters of controls and diluted samples to the red marked mixing wells. Refer to the kit insert for suggested control placement based on levels of concern. Using a 12 channel pipetter, mix the liquid in the wells by pipetting up and down three times. Transfer 100 microliters to the antibody coated wells. Incubate for 10 minutes at room temperature, 18 to 30 degrees Celsius or 64 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, mixing for the first 10 to 20 seconds by sliding the microwell holder back and forth on a flat surface without splashing reagents from the wells. Discard the red marked mixing wells. Shake out the contents of the antibody wells. Fill each antibody well with diluted wash buffer and dump them out. Repeat this step three times, then turn the wells upside down and tap out the remaining liquid on an absorbent towel. Pour the needed volume of substrate from the green labeled bottle into the green labeled reagent boat. And with the new tips on the 12 channel pipetter, pipette 100 microliters of substrate into the wells. Incubate for 10 minutes at room temperature, 18 to 30 degrees Celsius, mixing for the first 10 to 20 seconds by sliding back and forth on a flat surface. Discard remaining substrate and rinse the reagent boat with water. Pour red stop solution from the red labeled bottle into the red labeled reagent boat. Using the same pipette tips on the 12 channel pipetter as were used to dispense the substrate, add 100 microliters red stop to each well and mix by sliding back and forth on a flat surface. Discard the tips. Wipe the bottom of the microwells with a dry cloth or towel. Air bubbles or layering should be eliminated as they could affect analytical results. Transfer wells to the far right slot on the Neogen StatFax reader. Results should be read within 20 minutes of adding the red stop solution. Using the Neogen StatFax Reader. If you are not using the Neogen StatFax Reader, this is pre-programmed with our assays. You will need an equivalent strip or plate reader with a 650 nanometer filter and the Neogen Veritox software. Using the 4700 reader, position the carrier to the left so strip A is in the center of the track. Use the run test key to access the user's test menu. The instrument will display the instrument's pre-programmed tests. Press arrow up or down to advance page to locate the correct test, or press by number and enter. Confirm the test selection. After confirming the test, 
there will be three options, accept the test, limit the number of wells, and quit. Limiting the number of wells is not required, but is helpful when running only a few wells as the reader will read all 12 positions unless limited. Click accept and then start. The reader will begin reading and calculating your results. If the correlation coefficient is less than 0.98, results should be considered invalid. Samples greater than 40 parts per million must be diluted and retested. For dilution instructions, please refer to the kit insert. If you have any questions about these procedures, please contact Neogen for technical sales staff.